So your child has just received a dyslexia diagnosis, or maybe you've been suspecting dyslexia for a while now. If you're anything like the majority of parents that we talk to who are brand new to dyslexia, you're probably feeling a bit overwhelmed right now. You have a hundred questions swarming through your brain. Well, we're here to help. Today we're going to tackle one big topic, and that is choosing a tutor for your child with dyslexia. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and join me for a chat about the top 10 questions. My name is Shannon and I am a co-owner of Fearless Readers. We are a virtual reading and spelling intervention company. We're based out of San Antonio, but we work nationwide. So we have students and coaches all over the country. We would love the opportunity to work with your child, but regardless of the intervention company that you choose, we just want to be here to help. We're passionate about dyslexia and other learning differences, so we like to spread awareness and provide all the helpful information that we can to parents. So if you enjoy our videos and you enjoy this content, like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you've been thinking about hiring a tutor for your child, you know that this process can seem a bit complicated or confusing. Finding the right help for your child is so important though, because this really can make a huge difference in their life. That's why we wanted to create this video and provide some insight. Before we dive in, I wanted to take a second to share with you a little bit about our philosophy and the approach that we take when teaching children how to read. We named this company Fearless Readers because we want children to stop feeling afraid of reading. We want them to have the confidence that they need to, in class, be able to read out loud when they need to. They might not ever be the best reader ever, but they'll have the confidence they need to do it and the skills and the tools to do it successfully. If your child ends up loving books, that's fantastic. If they don't end up loving books, that's still fantastic. We want to make sure that they have the ability to read when they need to and help them explore other avenues to learning where they can be successful. Just remember, not loving to read is not the same as not loving to learn. Your child can dislike reading and be an exceptional student who is hungry for knowledge. All right, now that we have a solid expectation here, let's go ahead and address some of those questions that you have. Question one, do I need to get tutoring? Yes, we do believe that your child would benefit greatly from reading instruction. If intervention isn't received inside or outside of school, reading will almost definitely become a total nightmare for your child, and you don't want that. In most cases, when reading is taught in schools, the sequence of teaching can be a little bit all over the place. And for kids that don't have dyslexia, it's fine. They're able to fill in the gaps, and they go on to read just fine. But for kids that do have dyslexia, they're not able to just fill in the gaps. English is already a very complex language to learn, right? It's filled with rules. And then there's an exception to almost every single rule out there. Um, it's like putting your third grader in advanced calculus and expecting them to be able to just fill in the gaps and get it after a while. It's not going to happen. Reading instruction or reading intervention is necessary and a child with dyslexia absolutely needs it. The next question is, is it too late to start tutoring? So this question is probably a little more specific to those that are discovering a dyslexia diagnosis later on in life. So whether it was 16 or 30 or 60, um, this is who that's addressed to. And the answer is no, 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 absolutely not. It is never too late to start intervention. So yes, if you do have a child that is 16 and they're just getting started with that intervention, they're gonna have a lot more ground to cover because that gap is so wide. But if they go ahead and they stick with it, they get into that good program and start their intervention, they're going to see a radical change. So to put it into perspective, we've got students that are in high school, we've worked with students that are in college, I have heard of people in their 50s and 60s deciding or figuring out that they have dyslexia later in life and deciding, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that intervention program and just see what happens. And they were blown away. They went back and they basically learned all over again from scratch how to read and spell. And they were so much more successful because now everything makes sense and they've got those tools that they need. So yes, <laughs> the answer to that question is no, it is never too late to start intervention or start tutoring. The third question is, what kind of tutor do I actually need? And this is a very, very important one. So 
I know that a lot of teachers and substitutes and people in college or just out of college, a lot of times they'll advertise themselves as tutors. And these people are amazing, most of them, um, and they are able to help your average student with whatever homework help they need or going over lessons and things like that. Um, and they do amazing work and they're a great resource. But for a child with dyslexia, that's not the type of person that you need helping your child. Um, we like to say more of the same is more of the same. So if your child has dyslexia and in school, they are not being successful and they're not understanding how to read and spell, um, getting more of that same help outside of school isn't going to do them any good. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your child's time, and you're wasting your money. Um, so what kind of person do you need to look for? If your child has dyslexia, you need to look for a reading intervention program. Um, somebody who doesn't just call themselves a tutor. They talk about how they focus solely on reading and spelling and providing reading and spelling intervention. And they use an Orton-Gillingham based program. So Orton-Gillingham is the methodology. And I encourage you to do a lot of research because um, if you aren't using an OG program, Orton-Gillingham OG, um, you're not going to see success. So after this video, go ahead and Google that and spend some time researching that. At Fearless Readers, we use the Barton Reading and Spelling Program, which is highly successful. Um, again, that's something else that you can spend a little bit of time researching. And if you're more interested in learning about um, Fearless Readers and our program, we do free consultations where we go a lot more in depth and provide tons of knowledge and resources about that program. So um, that's also something that we can set up for you if you're interested. To quickly summarize here the type of tutoring that you need, you aren't looking for just a regular tutor, you are looking for a reading and spelling intervention program. So you want to find somebody who is offering an OG program. Again, after this video, go and spend some time researching on Google, type in OG method, Orton Gillingham and familiarize yourself with the different types of options out there. That is what is going to help your child with dyslexia be successful. Question four, how long does an intervention program take? Well, the answer is really going to vary from student to student. So previously I talked about how you're not looking for an average tutor, you're looking for a reading and spelling interventionist. Um, keep in mind this isn't that your child is struggling with biology for example and you're gonna hire a biology tutor and once the class is over and your child passes you don't need the biology tutor anymore so you're done um, not at all the same thing your child has dyslexia and we need to start back at the very foundation and rebuild your child's skills so at Fearless Readers, we use the Barton and Reading and Spelling program, and on average, it can take anywhere from a year and a half to three years for your child to progress through the entire program and complete. And I know that seems like an incredibly long time, and it is. It's quite an investment, but when your child finishes the program, you are just going to be amazed at what they are able to do now, you know, their confidence gains, how successful they are, and we will all celebrate together because it's going to be such a huge accomplishment. Question five, when should I be able to see results? This answer is also going to vary because it's dependent upon a variety of different factors. So the first being the age of your child. Um, if your child is six, obviously they have a lot less ground to cover and a much smaller gap to close. Whereas if you have a child that's 17, man, that is years and years of instruction that we have to go back over and start at that very foundation and build up again. So it's going to take a lot longer for them to see success. This answer is also going to depend upon how you define results and what your expectations of success are. So for this reason, at the beginning of our first session with students, we like to spend some time with parents setting realistic goals and expectations for the program. So for example, it might not be realistic to say that your short-term goal is for your child to be able to read successfully on his own. Um, you know, the child is gonna get there and it's gonna take some time, but it's not gonna happen immediately. So maybe a more realistic short-term goal would be something like um, improved self-confidence or improved ability to recognize letters and their sounds or 
um, approved ability to accurately blend sounds together in words. You know, something that is measurable and achievable in the short term. And keeping in mind that this is also going to vary depending upon the age of the student. It's really important that you give the program and the interventionist adequate time to take root and to be able to really see those changes. But at the same time, if more than six months has gone by and you have nothing to show for it, that's probably not a good sign. We think that communication is absolutely key. So I encourage you to set up meetings with your interventionist so that way that you can like talk through where your child's at in the program and um, you know how things are progressing. There is a chance that things could be happening and changes might be in the progress and you just aren't aware of them. So they can take that time to really walk you through it. At Fearless Readers, we like to send out weekly communication to our parents. So that usually comes through on a Thursday or Friday where we send a summary of everything that we've gone over during the week. Sometimes we'll um, send along some supplemental resources to use at home. We might go over some of the spelling rules that we've covered. Um, that way parents can apply those at home. Um, we just think that it really helps to be in the loop. And we, our parents know that we're always just a phone call or an email away. Um, so we're able to answer any questions or concerns that they might have. Again, communication is key. Question six, how do I find a good intervention program? So at Fearless Readers, we offer online intervention and we use an Orton Gillingham program, uh, Barton Reading and Spelling. We work really hard to make our sessions engaging and interactive and fun. And we bring in that multi-sensory aspect. Um, we also pay really careful attention to when we assign a student to a coach to make sure it's a good personality fit, um, that they have a similar learning style, that way your child is most successful. However, we recognize that there are many different interventionists out there. Choosing a good one or finding a good one can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, there are a lot of different tutor boards out there that have plenty of people that claim to be able to work with children with dyslexia. Um, but be careful because a lot of those people aren't certified in dyslexia and aren't offering um, an Orton Gillingham based program. So you definitely wanna look for somebody, again, if I haven't said it enough, that is offering a quality Orton Gillingham based program. You'll likely have to do a little bit of research on your own. Um, one place that I would start with is checking with your school. They probably have a dyslexia interventionist on staff um, and that's always a great place to start. Um, they probably already have a program that they use in house. However, sometimes kids aren't seeing success with that, so parents want to look outside of the school, and that's totally fine. Um, but again, they might have some contacts or some resources for you. I highly suggest that you look for Facebook groups um, in your local community. So um, if you're in San Antonio or if you're in Texas or wherever you're at, just start looking for local Facebook groups to join, and you can always ask for referrals through there. The next thing you want to do is really spend some time researching. So I've said it a hundred times, you want an Orton Gillingham based program, OG program. There are several different ones out there to choose from. Um, different interventionists use different things. So we use Barton Reading and Spelling, there is Wilson, there's Take Flight, there's a couple of others. So spend some time digging in and making sure that you really understand that program. Um, once you kind of settle on a program that you like, you can always reach out to the program developer and ask if they have a list of interventionists that are certified through the program. Um, so if you'll reach out to Susan Barton, who's the creator of Barton Reading and Spelling, she'll send you a list and you'll find Fearless Readers on there. You'll find Caitlin Baker, which is um, a co-owner and head of all of our training. Um, she actually takes on a few students occasionally here and there too. So that's always a great place to start. Next thing I suggest is tell everybody that you know that you're looking for somebody. Chances are you'll come across people in your community and people in your school, people in your mom's group that might have already worked with somebody or seen um, or heard good reviews about somebody and they might have someone to pass along to you. Question seven, what should I ask my interventionist? So once you find an interventionist, I highly suggest that you schedule a time to meet face to face. And obviously if this is online, it would need to be in a virtual setting. We conduct our consultations via Zoom. 
this is a great opportunity for you to ask questions and really get to know this person before you sign an agreement with them. Um, you could meet with five different interventionists and find that only one of them is actually the right fit. They're all using the same program. They're all highly qualified, but sometimes it comes down to personality and learning style. You are going to be working so closely with this person. You as the parent will be communicating with them often and your child will be meeting with them frequently for their services. So you wanna make sure that this is a great fit personality wise, that your child enjoys working with this person and gets along with them. And again, that the learning style is similar. Don't feel badly if you meet with this person and ultimately you decide they're not the right fit for your child. Um, let them know and provide them that feedback because they might have another referral of somebody that they could pass you off to that would be a better match and personality wise or learning style wise. We want our kids to be successful and so it doesn't hurt our feelings if you say, hey, you know, it just, I think my child really needs a personality type that's more like this. Um, that Again, that's great information for us to know because we might have a good referral for you. During that meeting with the interventionist, there are some questions that you really need to ask. Think of it like an interview. Here are our top questions. Do you specialize in working with children with dyslexia and do you use an Orton-Gillingham based program? If the answer to either of these questions is no, then you should keep looking. Will you be giving my child homework? Not everybody does. Some people like to pass along some additional resources that you could use at home. Um, supplemental things, activities, games, all of that's fine. It's really up to you and your personal preference. There isn't a right answer here. How involved will I be in this process? How many sessions per week will they need to attend? What kind of results should I expect to see? These are the top questions that I would ask, but really spend some time thinking through what additional questions you'd like to ask and jot them down and have them ready for that consultation or that meeting with your interventionist. This is a really big investment time and money wise on your part. So you wanna have all of the information that you need to make a sound decision. Question eight, what if my child resists intervention? So this is why it is so important to really spend a lot of time carefully deciding who you're going to go with for intervention, really paying attention to that personality fit and learning style fit. It's not shocking that your child might not really enjoy the sessions. Um, they really hated reading probably in school. They've had a lot of trauma maybe. Um, their confidence is deflated, it's at a low. This just has not been an enjoyable thing for them. So it's going to take some time. But if your child is really resisting, they're crying, they're throwing fits, they're refusing to participate, you wanna sit down and have a conversation with them and try to figure out what it is that's bothering them and why they don't want to do this. Um, then talk about those things and those feelings with your interventionist and brainstorm and come up with some ideas and some solutions. Um, you wanna make sure that these sessions are fun. So we like to incorporate games and incentives and prizes and things like that. Um, to really brighten the day of our students and make this something that's interesting and somewhat enjoyable. Question nine, how often does my child need to attend sessions? So I like to compare this to going to the gym. If you go to the gym once a week, do you think that in six months you're really going to see progress? Probably not. It's going to require going to the gym three times a week for an hour each time and probably some other lifestyle changes too. This is a huge commitment and the same is true for dyslexia intervention. The more times you go, the more progress you're going to see and you'll be amazed at the results six months down the road. At Fearless Readers, we do a minimum of two sessions per week for one hour each and that is set by the program developer, Susan Barton. Um, so two hours a week is the minimum, but I really encourage you if you're able to add on that additional session. Um, again, you'll be amazed at the results that you see. Question 10. Should I do two or more intervention programs at the same time? So the idea here is that more is better, right? But that's not necessarily the case all the time, especially not when it comes to intervention. Um, sometimes we'll have students that are doing intervention in school and then they'll call us up to see if they can do after school intervention as well. Um, while it's definitely doable, it's not our favorite thing and it can cause a lot of confusion for your child and also burn them out. Um, you know, different programs have different spelling rules, different processes, different sequences in which the concepts are taught and it's hard enough keeping up and 
learning one intervention program, two or more just makes things so much more complicated. Mm -hmm.